Tonight on Tom's River Schools Today, we'll take a look at your upcoming weather. And as always, we have a look at some of the events from around the school district. Tom's River Schools Today starts in two minutes. Hello and welcome to Tom's River Schools today for Thursday, March 14th, 2019. I'm Angelo Campanelli. And I'm Carly Cataldo. Later on tonight, we will check out your weather and we look at how one little boy is getting a little help from his friends. But up first tonight, we'll take a look at our elementary schools in our elementary happening segment. Starting off our elementary happenings, all students be sure to wear your school colors and support your school every Friday. Let's take a look at today's random fact of the day. Hi, I'm Tim Goodwin with TV21's random fact of the day. A person can survive without food for more than 30 days, but less than a week without water. in charge and he's taking over a tiny Vermont town one hoof and bleat at a time reporter Liz Teresa in introduces us to Lincoln It's time to take a trip around the world in our 60 second road trip. Can you guess where we are today? Charming, the thing that charming was a 
The first part of the story will make you furious. The second part will warm your heart. A thief in Illinois secret recently stole a prosthetic leg belonging to a three-year-old boy. But the outrage took a positive turn when Shriners Hospital's employers jumped in to help the child. Amy sub reports. Good job. Good job. Yay. Yay. Good job, buddy. It's going to take practice adjusting to his new leg. Josiah had been without a prosthesis since his was stolen 12 days ago. His mother feared it would take months to get a new one. She inadvertently left it in his backpack along with her wallet in their car for the night as she was getting Josiah and his four-year-old sister into their home. The next morning, the wallet, the backpack, and Josiah's $10,000 leg were gone. That's a dinosaur thing. He's done a great job of getting around without it, but the importance of walking will only grow as he does. And as news of the theft spread around the world, Josiah's mom hoped the thief would return the leg. That has not happened. But Shriners Hospital workers expedited the replacement process, casting a new leg here, having it constructed in Portland and shipped to St. Louis in just a week. I just feel so blessed. Night and day difference. I mean, they, they came in, they were worried about how long it was going to take. We reassured them we were going to get it done as soon as possible. And luckily, we, uh, we pulled through. And everyone's smiling. Everyone's smiling, right? <laughs> I felt like it was my fault, and that's his leg. I mean, none of us know what it's like to not have your leg and not be able to do, you know, the things that you may want to do. So to take that away from him, you know, I just feel so guilty and so responsible. Hi. And he's just the sweetest little boy. Time for us to take a look at Dictionary.com's word of the day. Today's word is upper crust, meaning the highest social class. And now for today's sentence of the day. The party was stuffy and no fun being there with the upper crust. And now we are going to take a short break, but coming up, we take a look at our intermediate happenings. And we'll also take a look at your weather, so stick around, we'll be right back. Spend all your time waiting For that second chance For a break that would make there's always some reason to feel not good enough And it's hard at the end of the day I need some distraction Oh, beautiful release Memories seep from my veins Let me be empty some peace tonight in the arms of the angel for outcasts and rebels or anyone who just dares to be different You've been trying for so long to find out where your place is But in their narrow minds, there's no room for anyone who dares to do something different Oh, but listen for a minute sticks and stones those words cut deep but they don't mean you're all alone and you're not invisible hear me out there's so much more to life than what you're feeling now
cutting off intermediate happenings. At Intermediate North, school apparel is available and on display in the front entrance of the building. Order forms are available in the main office of the school. Student Council is selling state test survival kits. This week, each bag consists of treats that will contain Starburst, fruit snacks, and a mint. Cost is $1. Please see your homeroom representative for more details. Tom's Road Police Camp applications for this free camp are available in the main office. The camp is for current 6th through 8th grade students at Tom's River. The camp is from July 15th to 19th, from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Campers must supply their own gym clothes, sneakers, and lunch for the week. More information is on the application itself, or you can email Officer Slavin, pslavin at trpolice.org. It's now time for us to take a look at our environmental tip of the day. Each day we'll bring you a tip that will help save the environment. Let's take a look at today's tip. Hi, I'm Allie, and this is your environmental tip of the day. In the morning, brew certified co coffee, a USDA certified organic label, means it was grown using sustainable standards. For the package? Yeah. Where? Me? Yeah, there. Maryland can become the first state in the nation that to ban plastic food containers and cups. Lawmakers in Maryland have passed a bill that could do just that. To protect the environment and clean up waterways, David Collins has more on Thursday, Tuesday's vote in Maryland's House of Delegates. Bill supporters warn at the rate the world is going, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Environmentalists believe banning the use of polystyrene foam used in carryout containers and cups is a step forward in cleaning up the planet. We have a duty, I think, to uh, future generations to start seriously curtailing the use of single-use plastics. Baltimore City Delegate Brooke Learman is the primary sponsor of the legislation. It may feel like a small step to say we're going to take this one form of really insidious plastic, styrofoam, and start with that just here in the state of Maryland. But it's a big step because we will be the first state to ban a major form of single-use plastic in, the, in America. The legislation, similar to what the Senate passed last week, prohibits restaurants, cafes, supermarkets, vending trucks, carts, movie theaters, K-12 schools and colleges from selling polystyrene food containers. This includes egg cartons, vegetable trays, and plates. Violators face a $250 fine. There will be a one-year grace period to phase out the containers, and the ban does not apply to products coming in from out of state. Day, the Maryland Retailers Association opposed the bill. In a 2017 report, the association includes the high cost of using alternative packaging as a reason. They claim for every dollar spent on replacement alternatives on average would cost $1.85. The increase would be passed on to consumers. Customers would spend an additional... million dollars each year to replace the banned products. The bill sponsor says Maryland is sending a message. That's really saying something and it's I hope it's the start of a larger bigger effort. It's now time for another break. Coming up later in the show we will take a look at your high school happenings. Tom's River Schools today we'll be right back. Load up on guns and bring your friends it's fun to lose and to pretend she's overboard and self assured oh no i know a dirty word hello
um, can. I'm busy right now. Starting off our high school happenings, attention students and staff, the school store is now open to serve you and stocked with all your Raider apparel needs. Brands including Champion, Under Armour, the school store is open every day after school from 1.40 to 2 p.m. We also have Yoohoo Snapple and Water for $1, as well as many delicious snacks to get you energized for your after school practices. Stop in, it's time to get Raiderized. Attention all students, the homeroom with the best attendance for the month will win a free breakfast. Thank you. High school students in Arkansas are speaking out after surviving what could have been a deadly accident while playing in a soccer game. A light pole fell injuring several players. Joe Ellison has more. Ellison in game and we're beating Darnell one nothing. But Mina soccer player Andrew Davis and his teammates never finished that game on Saturday in Clarksville. when gusts of more than 40 miles per hour pounded the stadium. And in this video, you can see the moment a light pole snapped in half, landing on a referee and grazing Davis's side. I was starting running around because I felt my head felt blood. I started running around saying I need help because I don't know what kind of condition I am. Parents, coaches, and fans rushed to the field trying to see who all was hurt. I mean, I heard the glass shattering and that's when the glass just kind of flew right around where I was. Another MENA player, Camden Broderson, says he had glass in his eye but ran to help the referee now pinned under that pole. He was face down at the moment and he was kind of screaming but I heard that he was also calm when he got to the ambulance pretty well, but he was screaming at the moment, and I, I kind of just pulled the bar off him, and then that's when everybody started crowding up. Broderson washed the glass from his eyes and was taken to the hospital. Davis and the referee were rushed away in an ambulance. My head was swollen pretty bad to begin with. My hands got torn up. I had seven stitches in my knee. Parents and players say the field was quickly evacuated and shut down as other light poles were shaking due to the wind. I didn't get lucky and through the grace of God that I was able just to move out of the way. Looking for community service hours while having fun? Volunteer to be a tutor at East Dover, Cedar Grove, or Hooper Avenue Elementary after school for an hour at your convenience. Please see Ms. Fitzgerald in W30 or M22 for an application packet. Hard work pays off in the long run. Detroit High School senior Michael Love is a good example of that. Love is preparing to make a decision on where to go to college, and he's got plenty of options, lots of them. Jen Shans reports. I got told a lot when I was younger I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that, so I just wanted to show people I'm better than what they think I am. He applied to more than 50 schools for next year. Not only do most want him, many are offering to foot the bill. Over $300,000 in scholarship money I have as of right now. Cornerstone was able to waive the acceptance fees for most of Michael's prospective schools. But on top of National Honor Society, varsity basketball, and an after-school job, he had to make the time to send in all these applications. I thought he was crazy when he told me he was applying to so many schools. Then the acceptance letters started coming in, one after another, from all over the country. The farthest is probably Arizona, University of Arizona. Every time I opened up a letter, I jumped up and down. We praise God and everything. I'm, I'm super proud of him. 
Michael, who wants to be an aerospace engineer, struggled academically in the beginning of high school. I wanted to improve myself because I didn't know what I was going to do after high school. Chances are now that won't include paying off student loans. One of Michael's acceptance letters came with a full ride offer. Once he told me, like, my mouth just dropped, <laughs> you know, I just started crying. It is now time for us to take a short break. After the break, we take a look at your three-day forecast. Tom's River Schools today will be right back. Another day is gone. I'm still all alone. How could this be? Now let's take a look at our three-day forecast. Coming up tomorrow, it will be cloudy with a high of 60 and a low of 42. For Saturday, it will be sunny with a high of 49 and a low of 29. For Sunday, it will be sunny with a high of 44 and a low of 28. Wrapping up tonight's show, a woman in Massachusetts has her wedding rings back after losing them on a trip last month. The woman had dropped the rings at a highway rest stop in Connecticut and thought she would never see them again. Amy Hudak reports from Branford, where one state trooper managed to track them down. Come on in. Kimberly and Peter Reginini are back from Boston with beaming smiles. The husband sliding his wife's wedding band and engagement ring back on her finger after losing them nearly a month ago. Oh my God, I can't believe this is that. The couple from Westwood, Massachusetts stopped to get gas in Branford on their way home from New York City in mid-February. Kimberly had taken her rings off in the car, setting them in her lap. When she got out of the car, the rings fell to the ground. They drove all the way home to Boston before noticing. The Reginini's called police right away and drove back to Connecticut, but the rings were gone. Every time that I would sort of look down and see that the rings weren't there, it was just a reminder of what had happened. She would kind of like wake me up in the middle of the night just being like, oh, I'm thinking about the rings. Sergeant Robert Derry taking the case, understanding the value beyond a price tag. It was obviously has a huge sentimental value to this husband and wife. Uh, so I'm, I'm coming up on 22 years of being married, so I can understand what that really means. Sergeant Derry pouring through hours of camera footage at the rest stop. Surveillance video shows a woman pulling up. She gets out of the car to pump gas, but she drops a glove. She goes to pick up that glove and finds the rings. She takes the rings home and troopers use her license plate to track her down. They didn't think they were real because they couldn't believe they'd find something like this on the ground at the rest area. So I figured maybe some uh, costume or something like that. State police putting the rings back in the right hands. I can't put it into words. It's just really wonderful. When something like this happens and it has a very positive ending, and it really makes you feel good about the job that we do and the career that I've undertook for the last 29 years. Remember, if you have a story you would like us to cover, or if you have an announcement, about an upcoming event, please send it to Interschool Mail to the TV studio at High School East, or you can email us at tv21 at tierschools.com. Also, be sure to tune in to TV21 throughout the day to catch this show as we bring you stories from around the district. Also, please take a look at our website, www.trschools.com slash tv21. Well, that wraps up tonight's show. For Tom's River Schools today, I'm Carly Cataldo. And I'm Angelo Campanelli. Have a great night.